Well, good morning and welcome to Zen Fits here in Blackstone, Virginia, the first day of November. Blackstone is the center of the world, but then you too are at the center of the world, and I'll explain that one day. The title of this talk is uh, The Transcendental Bruce Lee. The Transcendental Bruce Lee. Now, you know, uh, just watching clips of Bruce Lee uh, strikes you as this guy is operating on a different plane. <laughs> you know? This guy is not operating in cause and effect uh, in his art. Uh, he is not uh, responding to a stimulus. In other words, he's not in this uh, cause and effect uh, field. Uh, so there is, he's transcendental of the field of cause and effect. And this field of cause and effect is, the, is our common sense reality. I mean, this is the field of consciousness in the modern world, which is that of a mechanic. Uh, a mechanic knows that if there's an effect, there's a wobble in the car, there's a cause, and if you find the cause, you can remove the wobble. So this is, this is uh, mechanistic thinking, and it's very effective if you're working with machines. But it's not so good when you're working with life, because life isn't a machine. It doesn't operate under the same laws. <clears throat> so, but we, this is the only law we have. It's the law of our grammar. Damn it, I forgot this. <laughs> Uh, I need to put a sign here. Put on your mic. So we, so to just look at this, everything is assumed to be cause and effect. Everything we see has a cause. And you can analytically, reductionist thinking, uh, re reduce all the possible causes till you come to the one single cause. And if you come to that cause, any mechanic knows this, you can fix it, remove it, replace it, and the effect goes away. You remove the wobble. And you go, ah, I've restored zero. <laughs> I've restored nature. You see, I've, I've taken away the rub. I removed the thorn. I removed the irritation. I removed the imbalance. I've restored zero. But of course, there's another wobble, and there's another search for the cause, and there's another, ah, you see. So this, this works on both, this works in our personal lives, everyday life with this irritations and cause, I hurt, who did it, you did it, get out, or in, or socially in society. There's a shooter, who did it? Everybody comes up with a different cause. Anyway, if we're trying to understand this field of cause and effect is what we assume is nature's law. But it isn't. It's our language law. It's our grammar. <laughs> you see? It's our grammar. You know, man, if we don't understand the laws of grammar, uh, you can't be a poet. You're going to be a prose writer. And there's always going to be somebody say, well, you misspelled that. Or you could phrase this better. You know, the English teacher is always watching. Uh, the textbook, the grammar textbook is always at your hand, like the Bible, you see. But in poetry, you're free. There's poetry with rules. There's poetry with no rules. So poetry, jumping to this as an example, has a different set, a different field upon it operates. So we're looking at Bruce Lee metaphorically now, not literally, not factually, not historically, but metaphorically. So Bruce Lee, as a metaphor, points to this transcendent field where cause and effect is not operational. It's beyond cause and effect. It's beyond the grammar. It's beyond the language of subject, verb, object. Subject does something to an object. That's the, that's the cause and effect field. And of course, Buddha calls this the field or, 
of samsara. This is the field of suffering, of discontent, of anxiety, the field of uh, something's missing. You see, the field of cause and effect. So we're interested in looking at uh, uh, Bruce Lee as a metaphor for the transcendence of cause and effect, where everything rises together. Now, Buddhism called this dependent origination. Everything, the universe, is not operating cause and effect. It's all rising together as one, like a fountain. Like a fountain. Meditate on a fountain. It's just rising. All, and you know, it splits into many drops, you see. But the rising, reality is rising. And then it splits into our grammar. See, reality arises as one, and then it flowers into subject doing something to object, into cause and effect. But if you, if you go back to the source, there is no cause and effect. There is no Big Bang. There is no God causing anything. There is no, there is just this rising. There is just this now rising, you see, all at once together as one. But in order to function in a world, our mind uh, creates two. It creates duality so we can catch a bus and we can fix the car and we can make a cake, you see. But prior to that, there's this transcendence of being that is knowing, that being that is one. So if you watch Bruce Lee, you'll notice that he doesn't react to anybody. When somebody comes, when somebody acts towards him, he responds as that person. In other words, the cause and effect are one. So there's no gap between the stimulus and the response. There's no time there. There's no gap, you see. So he's instantly responding as the other. It's a dance. Fred and Ginger, you can't tell who's leading the other. They're both dancing together. And we recognize this, simul this, this uh, um, we call it synchronicity or spontaneous or I don't know what, harm, harmony or zero. Uh, and sometimes we drop into it. Sometimes we drop into this, it's called in sports, being in the zone. Sometimes a basketball team will drop into the zone and they can't do anything wrong. Everything is just zip, 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 faster than thought. And this is where the masters in sports, why they love sports, because the masters play at that level. They try to arrive at the level of transcendence, where they are not doing the sport, the sport is doing them. And when you get into that zone, you can't do wrong. There's no effort. It just seems so easy. Can't believe it. <laughs> you see? So we love sports. We love for those moments to arise when it's just, oh my God. You know, so this competition drives the athletes to this transcendent field that is beyond cause and effect. There's no thinking about what to do. And we all experience this when we're in, threatened. If a, if, you, if a truck is running towards you, you don't think, oh my God, a truck is running, what should I do? Should I go this way or that? Well, you're dead if you do. <laughs> so at that moment, you just act. And then you think about it. Oh my God, I could have been killed. So it falls back into grammar. I'm a, I'm a subject, that's an object and a verb. But during the action, during the moment, there is no gap. You moving out of the way of the truck is you and the truck are one. You're not responding to the truck. You are the truck and the truck is you. Anyway, is that enough for today? Is that enough Zen fit for today? <laughs> Thanks for dropping in.